Hello everyone, Mrs. Kruger again, and today we're going to talk about the structure of the atom. So atoms are the smallest unit that any element can exist in. However, atoms are made up of smaller particles called subatomic particles. And we're going to talk about three different types of subatomic particles today, including protons, neutrons, and electrons. So protons, uh, neutrons, and electrons can be distinguished from one another by their location in the atom, the type of charge that's associated with each one, and then also their mass. So we're going to talk about each of those. Protons have a positive charge. Protons can be found in the center of the atom, which is also called the nucleus. And protons have a mass of one, so one atomic mass units. And atomic mass units are the units that have been designated for measuring atoms. So I'm going to write 1 AMU. Neutrons can also be found in the center or the nucleus of the atom, but neutrons do not have any charge, so no charge. They're neutral. Neutrons also have a mass of 1 AMU. So while protons and neutrons are found in the center or the nucleus of the atom, electrons are actually found outside of the nucleus of the atom. Electrons have a negative charge, so they're negatively charged particles, where protons are positively charged and neutrons are neutral. And electrons are so small that they're not really measurable. So we can say that electrons have a mass of zero. So zero atomic mass units. All right. Next week, I'm going to show you how to draw an atom. So you can use these simplified Bohr's models to draw atoms, but we're not going to worry about that today. I'm just going to do a quick sketch and I'll explain this to you in next week's lecture. So I'm going to draw a Bohr's model of the atom lithium. So one atom of the element, I should say lithium. Lithium has three protons. So I'm going to draw three protons in the nucleus of this atom. Lithium has four neutrons. So I'm going to draw my neutrons around my protons. Sort of looks like a bunch of grapes. And even though I put a little plus sign in my protons because they're positively charged, I won't put any symbol inside my neutrons. Since they're neutral, they have no charge. So protons and neutrons can be found in the nucleus of the atom, while electrons are found on the outside. Actually, I need to fix this. So I'll draw my three electrons. So one lithium, lithium atom has three electrons. And I'll draw those on the outside of the nucleus. There is a very specific reason why I have two rings and why I've drawn a certain number of electrons on each ring. And again, I'll review that with you in next week's lecture. So one atom of lithium has three protons, three electrons, and four neutrons. So how do I know this? Where do I find this information? Well, you would have to look at the periodic table of elements. The periodic table can give you a lot of information about each element, including the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Unfortunately, I don't have a periodic table here at my house. I have a nice big one at school in poster form. And if we were at school, we would be working with uh, your own periodic tables, you'd be working with element cards, we'd be getting a lot of practice with this um, together in class. So what I'm going to do is actually draw one, what I call an element card. So this element card represents the element lithium. So I'll actually just draw this in the center. And each element card would have the element symbol in the center. And then it would have two numbers. So one number for lithium would be the number three. And then it would have a second number at the bottom that is often in a decimal. Okay. It's supposed to be a four. I'll fix that somehow. All right. The top number is called the atomic number. So each element has its own atomic number. 
The atomic number tells you the number of protons and also the number of electrons in any atom of a given element. So what this is telling me is that lithium has three protons and that it also has three electrons. So each atom, or I should say each stable atom of any element, has to have the same number of protons as it does electrons. Because protons are positive, electrons are negative, the protons balance out the neutrons. So each atom would have a neutral charge. And remember, neutrons don't have any charge, right? So they're not going to affect the number of protons nor the number of electrons. So for one atom of lithium, I'm using this number to understand that an atom of lithium has three protons and three electrons. How do I find the number of neutrons? Well, that's a little bit more complicated. So remember back to the beginning of the conversation when I said that every proton has an atomic mass of one. Every neutron has a mass of one. And electrons, we assign a mass of zero. This number here is the total mass of the atom. So it's the total number of protons plus the total number of neutrons. And we call this the mass number. So the top number is the atomic number. The bottom number is the mass number of the atom. And since this is the number of protons, plus the number of neutrons, I can use this final number to figure out the number of neutrons that are in my atom. So what I would do is actually round this number up to seven because we can't really have part of a neutron, right? So I'm gonna round this number up to seven. And what I would do is take seven, which is the mass number, And I would subtract the number of protons, which again was three, right? I'm looking at the atomic number to figure out the number of protons. So seven, the mass number, minus three, which is the number of protons. And I would find out the number of neutrons. So seven minus three is four, simple math there, right? And this is telling me the number of neutrons that are in the atom. Then I can go back and look for plus three equals seven, which masses, matches the mass number. All right. So that's a pretty simple example. I'll do one more with you. Maybe you can follow along and try to figure this out on your own. All right. I'll make sure uh, between now and next week, I put up some more practice examples for you as well. So make sure you're going on to Google Classroom and using the online interactives and the online games. Those will give you plenty of practice with this concept as well. All right, so let's talk about iron. So the elemental symbol for iron is Fe. Iron has an atomic number of 26 and a mass number of 55.84, 55.84. Five, 5 All right, so again, 26 is the atomic number. What does the atomic number tell us about every single atom of iron? It tells us the number of protons, and it tells us the number of electrons. So I don't want you to get confused. It's not the number of protons plus the number of electrons, right? It's the number of protons and also the number of electrons. So how many protons are in one atom of iron? 26. How many electrons are in one atom of iron? 26. So if you were able to figure that out, you're already on a roll. The bottom number is the mass number. 
So this is the mass of all the protons in one atom of iron plus all of the neutrons in one atom of iron. So I'm going to round this number up to 56. If the mass number is 56, how many neutrons would be in one atom of iron? Well, I would have to take the mass number. And since the mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, I know the number of protons is 26, so I can subtract 26 from 56 to figure out the number of neutrons. So 56 minus 26 is how many neutrons? 30. So I now know, just based on this element card, that one atom of iron has 26 protons, based on the atomic number, 26 electrons, and then we just found out, with a little bit of math, that it also has 30 neutrons. Since the number of neutrons plus the number of protons equals the mass number. Hopefully that was easy enough for you to figure out. Make sure you go online, check Google Classroom, go through the interactives and games again so you can get some practice with this and I will give you some more practice next week. So if you have any questions, please make sure you send an email or you can ask during our next Zoom meeting. Bye everyone.